added our assets. Now we have access to an image literal. So now we have our cat image. Great. Let's go on to our second case here. So case, what am I setting here now? What am I setting if it's case one? Dog, right? So go back, make sure we type in image literal. Double click on our placeholder image and select dog. Great. We still not exhausted our switch, so we'll put a default in here. What, what did he do? Oh, the person picture. Let's go ahead and put the person picture in. <laughs> All right. Cool. So we are good to go. Let's make sure we build. We have no errors here. So make sure you build and you have no errors. And let's go to our segmented control changed. Go down to our segmented control changed. So much chatter. Life is good. Life is great. All right. In our segmented control change, we have current segmented index. And here we want to set that property. So here we say sender, which is the segmented control, dot selected. Dot selected segmented index. Remember, our segmented control has a property called se selected segmented index. That index the user selected, that index the user selected, that's what we capture there. And we set it on our current segmented index. So this could be what values? Currently, what values we have? Valid values are what? Zero or one. Thank you very much. Either it's zero or one. Zero or one is coming from my segmented control. Currently, we only have two segments. Yes. Please do what we do, then you could change your code later. Uh, Tiffany, which code are you talking about? Is it the property observer? No, not the variable. The variable itself, I have it um, to have it. We said I have it to be right? And then, and then in index, I need action in the action? If it's zero, it's only going to be cat. No, it's still work. With zero, just zero, you hard coded zero and it changed it. Something else is happening there because you just hard coded it to zero. So your switch statement has zero, it's a cat. It never goes to one. Okay. All right, cool. Let's keep going here. So let's run our code. So run your code and let's test our segmented control. So I'm navigating over to my controls view controller. I click on dog and I get a dog. Excellent. I click back on cat, I get back a cat. So that works. Does everybody's segmented control work as advertised, according to this guy? Right? Uh, Yulia, you got your the cat and dog? Are they playing good together? Okay. Lilia, how's your cat and dog? They're good? Me. Good? All right. Excellent. Yes, sir. The default, yes. The default. Yes. Yes. And we could have uh, more images in there. We could have more segmented controls in there, right? Uh, yes. I will come to your computer to see what's happening currently, right? Okay, let's go on to the last part of the day. We'll go to our slider. So let's go to our slider. Let's set up a property for our slider. So for our slider here, let's set a property for our slider. For here, we have variable current year. We expect a float 
our slider is of type float. For here, I just set the default of 2012. For the slider, yes. A switch is a Boolean value. A segmented control is an int. And um, the slider is always a double, a float, sorry. Cool? So here we have a float, it's current year. I'll use did set to observe the changes here. And for here, we have a slider label that text. Why what? Oh, because our slider is the property, the value of the property of the slider is a float. So when we assign it, it should be a float as well. Because when we go down to our IB action, like we did with the segmented control, it needed to be an int. We need it to be a float here. Cool? All right, so here we have our string. Our string will simply be, sorry, it's going to be a string. Are we paying attention up here? We've seen, this, we've seen this initializer before. It comes in very handy. This particular initializer comes in very handy. So please pay attention here. Here we have a string. We'll use a string format. We'll use a string format. Here we pass a format. The format we pass in is percentage 0 .f, point f for float, floating point numbers. Basically, it's a float. Right? We do not want our slider label to say 1978.5. That's not a valid year. Everybody with me? I do not want my slider label to say 1978.5. Everybody with me? So to avoid that, I pass in a modifier here or a formatter. I pass in a formatter that says do not include any decimals. By specifying zero here, says do not include any decimals. If you're dealing with currency, you could pass in two. You could pass in two here. If you're dealing with currency, you could pass in two. Not like this. You could pass in two here. If you're dealing with currency. But I'm not dealing with currency. I do not want any decimal. I pass in zero point floating number here. Right? That is the format. Again, a simple Google search, if you're doing an assessment, could bring that up for you. But no, it's string format. Everybody with me? If you want to format a decimal, string format. And here I pass in what I want to format. What I want to format is my slider control. Slider control dot value. Again, look at the value type. The value is a float. Okay? Value is a float. And lastly, to wrap up, let's go down. Can we go down now? Can we go down? So lastly, <coughs> lastly, let's go to our slider IB action right here. And for here, I will update the current year. Current year gets updated to sender that value. And again, value is a float. Luba, why float? Because my value is a float as well. My sender that value on my slider is a float. So the current year needs to be a float as well. Your question was, why is a float? If it's an int, int and float cannot work together as far as like, I cannot assign an int to a float, right? Yes. As you slide through it, it's floats. You could convert it to be what you want it to be, but it's a float property. Cool? All right, so let's build this and see what our outcome is. What is what? <laughs> we said it. We said it. Uh, remember back in, did we not set it yet? Uh, we have a configure. Oh, yeah, we haven't done it. Thank you, Tiffany. So we haven't done a minimum and maximum value. Thank you. So let's stop here for a second. <coughs> we need to do a minimum value for our step, uh, our slider, and a maximum value according to what Tiffany brings up. So here, let's create a configure, configure slider, configure slider. So for our configure slider, our slider also has a minimum value. So slider control. Slider control that minimum. Slider control that minimum value. We assign it 1978. 
slider control dot maximum we assign it 2019 and the default value will start with here slider control dot value is 2012 and again where should we be calling configure slider where view the load why view the load Exactly. So as Chelsea is saying, we want to call our configure slider in view load because that's a good place to start up. View load gets called once. We want to configure our slider once. Yes. So now, um, once you put the maximum in view load, then that's that's yeah exactly. On how long it is, it break up exactly. Exactly. Yes, sir. You can't have a certain We, we did that to be one, right? That was the step value to be one. Oh, this one doesn't have, no, it doesn't. You could do extra logic to make it work. So every time you slide it, you could do some extra logic to increment it or whatever. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, flexibility there, right? You could grab stuff from an array, right? I could map the value that I slide. Why do you keep shaking your head, man? You're a quarter. I could map the value that I'm sliding to an array and get some image from it, right? I could do a lot of things there. Yes, sir. Yeah, it comes with a default value. If you look at IB uh, Interface Builder, there's a default value there. Yeah, they come with default values. OK, let's test our code. Did we call stepper? No, we didn't. I mean, did we call slider? Make sure you call configure slider and run your application. It works as advertised. Thank you. Thanks for coming. All right, so here we click on show controls. We started out with 2012. Everybody, we started out with 2012. I go all the way down to 1978, such a beautiful year. That's when baby Alex came. Uh, okay. And we slide up. We slide up to 2019. Cool? So the slider works. Our segmented control works, our stepper works, our switch works. Yes. You could connect them somehow. That's your homework. <laughs> All right. Um, Anybody want me to review anything before we end today? What's that? Right here? Yes, sir. Because it started out with 1978, right? And then our actual label doesn't show the decimals, remember? So it doesn't, it doesn't go by one or by one whatever. In our string format, it gets rid of the decimals. So if we didn't do that, it would be exactly. It would be like 1978.1. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. All right. So we will. Yes, sir. You are image named. Yeah. It's faster to code, and you see the thing visually. All right. That that's an upgrade. Yeah. 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 Uh, so Ian's question was, what's the difference between um, the image literal and UI image named? Image literal is faster, it's visual, right? We see the image. There's no second guess in there. Do I have a king card or do I have a back card? I see literally the image of the cat. Everybody with me? Right, so that's an upgrade there. That's about three OSs ago, in Apple introduced this. My stringify was just a built-in thing I made. It wasn't uh, nothing fancy. Yes, yes, very similar. All right, so we'll end here.